What's good? Welcome back to another edition of Talk That Talk Podcast. I go by the name of Bacon. I got my co-hosts with an S with <laughs> me. Yeah. It's your boy, man. There's for too many reasons. Hey, y'all see the headband. It's lit. Where you get them at, man? I see you on there with something new every time. I hooping them, but I, I can't find the ones that you begin at. Hey, look, my brother, sleeves.com. They have okay. everything you need. Shameless plug. Shout out to Sleeves. Listen, man, they got headbands, uh, wristbands, leg sleeves, right socks. Uh, yeah, S-L-E-E-S dot com at Sleeves. You feel me? You get different kind of percentages. Matter of fact, Man, you know, we ain't getting paid to do no free advertising. <laughs> what are you doing, man? man? We got my man Hot Take, Jay. What's up, yo, Jay, man? Yo, man. No, I'm happy to be here. I finally found my zen, got my lighting. Look at uh, it. Trend, trending in the right direction, you know what I'm saying? And your light skin popping right now, too, brother. You know, hey, you know what hot take, team light skin. You know what Hot Take, Jay, uh, scenery looking like right now? It's looking like, um, dang, I just forgot it. Oh, Steve. Yeah, he had a moment. What's the, day, <laughs> what's the club that everybody go to in Atlanta again? Magic City. Magic City. It's looking like Magic City. Time to go home. Mm-hmm. Right, turn on the lights. All the lights in there. They're like, all right, y'all, get your lemon pepper asses and go. Time to go get the chicken and go. We got to close up. It's time to close up. There's so much hey, left. man, That's you good. look good. You feel good, man. I'm trying to, I want I want to get this thing going right, man. Gotta no, it right. ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But, hey, reasons. We got some drama, dr- dr- drama alert, man. What's going on in the streets, man? Hey, man, listen. You know, you know we in this council culture society. Mm. And, man, and, and our community, man, speaking to the black folk, man, we trying to cancel Rachel Nichols, man, mm. over a private conversation. Ooh. This is this is crazy. Look, listen, they acting like she was on some Donald Sterling. Right. You feel me? And I mean, like I said, I'm a I'm a huge Rachel, Rachel Nichols fan. When you ever since the jump debut, I don't know what, three, four years ago. Been a minute. It's been a minute. Like she has nothing but a champion for our community. We talking to Tracy McGrady's, the Chauncey Billups, Stack Five, Matt Barnes, Kendrick Perkins, Scotty Pippen. Right. Like when you look at her panel, no matter who she brings in, for the most part, it is an African American NBA player that gets to speak and have a platform to go to different heights to where right. all these dudes now are doing different things. And for her to get ripped, how she's getting ripped right now, it just don't sit well with me. On top of her comments, wasn't even that malicious. Like, so what did she like, say? What did she say, Reese? Um, she she basically said like. Uh, she respects Maria Taylor, and mm-hmm. Maria Taylor is the uh, African American woman who hosts this NBA countdown with Jalen Rose, Jay Williams, and Adrian Wojnarowski. And she basically said, um, you know, she respects Maria Taylor and everything that she's doing. And, you know, but if they feel in the pressure of giving her something, um, then I guess do it. But basically, don't do it to, to my extent of my job. Right. You feel me? Like, you know, if y'all feel like, cause she, cause she says she's a woman. So she understands how ESPN has not been very inclusionary, inclusive at least. And um, she's just like, you know, don't give her my job because Maria Taylor basically was the anchor of the NBA finals preview show and the after show. And that's usually the title that Rachel Nichols has held over the duration since NBA has been on ABC ESPN networks and everybody's coming for for that and, and yesterday, uh, I believe on the jump, she came out and openly apologized for her comments and Ooh. and and she didn't want to seem like she was throwing shade or being malicious towards Maria Taylor and all that stuff. Me personally, when I when I seen the apology, I'm like, that's cool, but I I didn't think she needed to apologize. But that's just me. Like, how you feel yeah. about that, Hot Tech? Bro, so like. You know, I've had to face. I'm going off the cuff here because I didn't. I didn't get to do my homework on this one, but I already know where I, where I'm at with it. Which is basically, I don't believe in affirmative action. I don't believe in handouts where you got to be qualified to get the job that you 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 earn. And so, if if it really is on some diversity stuff, and she's getting kind of pushed to the side, really at her expense, then that's not how it should be done at all period dot so like you get somewhere on your own merits you get battle tested and if if she took that job from Rachel Nichols on her own merits 
then give it to her. Give her what you do. But uh, but if her comments wasn't that bad, there's a there's a PC component to uh, to our society that I'm just not feeling. I you know I shoot it straight. Whether if I'm gonna say something about somebody, I'm gonna say it to their face. I may say it behind closed doors or in another moment, but I ain't never shying away from what I said. And so if I had to go back on TV and apologize, like like I'm looking in the mirror, like what what am I reduced to? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I no handouts. That's all I'm saying. No no not diversity, not George Floyd, not his cancer culture, none of that. That's that's where I'm at. No, I, 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 I definitely uh, can test to where you're coming from, brother. Um, but I, I just want to be honest, and this is the world we live in. There are a lot of handouts, and sometimes mm-hmm. we are on the bad end of those handouts where we don't even get an opportunity because of the color of our skin. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we do get positions because of the pressure of what's going on in society, what's going on around the world. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that bad press. And so what they try to do to show face is say, hey, you know, uh, this is the opportunity for you. Look, we want to give it to we for the people we got. And you, we know what it is at the end of the day. Uh, my thing with the whole Rachel Nichols thing, I get it. First of all, she said it out of the private of her home and, and the privacy, her privacy was being invaded by whoever leaked that information and whoever quote unquote, decided to do something like that. I know somebody got a bag for that clip. I know that for sure. Mm-hmm. Somebody got a bag for that. Um, and then my thing is this. She didn't say nothing wrong. All she said was something that we all will say as human beings. If we are at a job and somebody else comes in who maybe is a great candidate doing amazing things, and then let's say like you doing your job extremely well as well, but they say, you know what? We want to give this person a job because we don't want to. We don't want to deal with the backlash, so we're just gonna give it to them because they quote unquote we need to give them to them. So sorry, uh, you got to accept it, and that's the way business go. But I understand where she's coming from. She's like, yo, this is a final. This is another opportunity to to display my talents to the world, and this is another opportunity to create more opportunities for me, right? Business opportunities, because they're like, yo, Rachel Nichols, she did the finals thing. She's been doing a lot of stuff for the jump. Let's get her on this or that or what or other endorsement deals. So that's taking money out of the, her pocket. And if that was the other way around, we will feel the same way. And a great thing I appreciate about her is that she said, look, I wish her all the success. Mm-hmm. Just don't take my success. Like if, if, if she earned it, and they just want to go in a new direction because they're like, look, we want to try something different. I'm rocking with that. I'm okay with that. But if you're just doing it, which a lot of people do these things, you do it to show face, to show, hey, we for the people. Well, we know what it is. Y'all not for the people. Y'all for the money. And y'all for making sure y'all ain't dealing with all that nonsense or not nonsense, but the, the backlash of not getting, like, for example, hiring more black coaches. You think that's a coincidence or you think they're just doing that because they want to have numbers because it's it's been going on. The chirping's been going on. Like, why y'all don't hire black coaches? And I always say you should never get hired based off the color of your skin. You should always get hired based off your skill level and what you bring to the table. Right. And the best fit for what organization you're going to get hired for. But the reality is, is that you're going to get hired based off the color of your skin. There are a lot of job applications and job interviews that they already know who they're going to hire before they even hire, do the hiring process. And a lot of times they're not looking to bring in people of color. They're looking to bring in one of their own. It's just, it's what the world is. And so I get both sides. I get where Maria Terry could feel a certain way. Like, damn girl, like you doing a lot of stuff. You should just be like, look, it is what it is. Hey, more power to you. I'm going to do what I do from this point of view, and I'm going to rock it. But I, I don't know. To have to get on the show, I know why she had to do it, because she's a representation of ESPN. She don't want to lose her job. And, and at the end of the day, we feel certain things. We feel certain ways about colleagues, employees, and all that stuff. But if you want to keep that job, there's certain things you can say in the office, and there's certain things that you can't say in the office. And that's just one of those things. She knows she probably can say something like that in the office, but she probably said that wherever she was. And it's sad that her privacy was invaded and now she's part of Instagram and now she's getting backlash because she does do a lot for the community. She does connect with the community. And like I told reasons earlier, it's like, don't don't burn your bridges with your allies. Like you need some allies. You need some people that's not your skin color to help fight that battle. 
because they have also resources that we may not have asset, uh, 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 and, access to. So, and that's, and that's what I'm saying. Rachel Nichols, like I said, ESPN and Rachel Nichols are synonymous with one another. And as you saying, allies, she's an ally. And it's like, you know, you mm-hmm. know, Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes and Kendrick Perkins, everybody, you know, is still champion for Rachel Nichols and, and being in her corner and supporting her. But you know, the, the outside backlash is where stuff really starts turning heads. And it's like, we we'll be quick to try to get rid of an ally because we in such a black and white society right now with all this Black Lives Matter stuff and everything. And it's like, we gotta stop this, bro. Like, you know, everybody ain't out to be a racist. Like, we, yeah. we just have to get past that. Everyone is not out to be a racist. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what comes to mind as you guys was talking about this was uh, was Drew Brees and how he was able to end his career on a good note. Because like I'm sitting here like this is I, you know ever since I've been an adult, Drew Brees been doing it right, and you know he's a leader of men, right? right. And so you have you have one moment that you know shows right. a little not reading the room, but you know your track record, and you have people that should be going to bat for you. Like that, that counts, that means something. And so if Rachel Nichols has that, cause you know, she wasn't necessarily, you know, my favorite, but um, but I also didn't despise her the way I do some of these other guys, you know, the Brian Winhorse and yeah. Chris, Chris Broussard, but whatever, that's, that's another story. Uh, no, she, she held it down though. And, uh, and you know, the cream always rises. So she'll, she'll land on her feet, I'm sure with whatever shakes out here. Definitely, definitely. And I, I would say to our people, man, don't we make mistakes just like they make mistakes. Right. And I know we always got this hidden agenda. Like that's how you always really feel. Look, like the Drew Brees thing. He made a mistake, yeah. but he's done a lot for the black culture. And he's done a lot for New Orleans and, <laughs> and, and, for, wow. and for, for them to just throw that man under the bus the way they did and to make him apologize again, crying. It's, it, come on, man. We, we got to know, we got to, we got to read the room ourselves yeah. as well. There are people yeah. who make mistakes. Yeah. They're human beings. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they still have biases that they still try to deal with on a regular basis. They're not uh, uh, naive to it. You may have some little bi- biases that come up. You may say some things. I may say some things about a, a certain ethnic group that just, Oh yeah. I shouldn't have said that. So just mm. come on. y'all. Look, look, we can't be doing that, but. It's only one perfect person. That's the man above. So yeah, none yeah. of us him. So I'm going to need us to chill out. Chill out, chill <laughs> out. But anyway, it's finals day, game one, the Milwaukee Bucks against the Phoenix Suns. The great thing about this finals is that everybody on the floor will be the first opportunity to receive an NBA ring or an NBA champion. Nobody's on that floor has won an NBA title. One ever. person has already guaranteed a ring for this year, too. I don't know if y'all saw that. Oh, yeah, Tory Craig. Tory yeah. Craig is guaranteed a ring. <laughs> hey, um, we'll talk about that. But like I said, nobody has officially won. I don't care what you guarantee. I don't care what you about to do. Nobody has officially won. How do you feel about this NBA Finals? Are you excited? Is it a lackluster? Is it like one of those San Antonio and Detroit? Like, it's not going to live up to the hype. It's going to be born where the, the ratings are going to be down. How do y'all feel about the Finals? First, first and foremost. Go ahead, Reason. Um, it's an interesting final. It's a very interesting final because, like, the names, right? Like, Devin Booker is making a name. Giannis has a name, but we all know Giannis is yeah, yeah, yeah. CP3 is the biggest name, but he ain't never been there. And so I feel like this is one of those finals that lacks the names. Mm. And this final excites pure basketball fans mm-hmm. like me, you, and Jack. You like this yeah. excites us because we're here to watch hoops and we're going to fall into the hoops. This final is not going to excite the non-casual basketball fan. You feel me? People ain't gonna be pulling up. Like, oh, I gotta stop and watch the finals. So yeah, I'm interested to see how it's gonna play out. Um, I've been doing a lot of back and forth of just watching matchups and seeing how it's gonna play out. But what I do know, mm. after watching this Clipper series with Devin Booker, I feel like we gotta slow down. Ah, we gotta slow down. I feel like, and I became a part of it, the anointing, was coming a little too fast. You did. 
You did. And, and I can I can I can I can attest that it was, you know, I played a part into the anointing because he struggled in this Clipper series. People like to talk about it. The man struggled. He wasn't shooting, he wasn't shooting that hot mm -hmm. in his Clipper series. And for him to leave this Clipper series dealing with PG, he let Pat Bev get underneath his skin and really rile him up. Terrence Mann got a crack at him. You about to walk in and being guarded by PJ Tucker. Because I that's the matchup. I if I'm Bud, I'm putting PJ Tucker on Devin Booker. There's no reason to put Chris Middleton on him because uh the Suns just do not have another guy that needs to be guarded. You put Drew Holiday on, on CP, and that's how you work it out. And Giannis will be back maybe tonight, possibly game two. I said game three to be safe. And so I will go PJ Tucker on D Book because PJ Tucker is a is a, is a pest. He's strong. So D book ain't gonna be able to, uh, you know, you know, bully him, quote unquote. And then uh, it goes back to I know Jay gonna talk about it. Is how long you gonna leave Brooke Lopez on the floor if they get mm -hmm. the if they get the cooking with this pick and roll? So mm -hmm. those are the kind of things I'm interested in currently, and I give my serious prediction after y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am interested. You uh, that was all spot on. Um, I think that. I'm excited as I, I was a little bummed out. Is this going to be anticlimactic? And then as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I was like, got some new faces. And then also remember when the Warriors first won that championship, we had like murderers row of point guards that got hurt. And it it was a it was a learning process. And so the same things I'm incriminating the Bucks for this year, if they escape out of this with the title they're going to they're gonna be battle-tested and, and, and grown coming out of this. And if it's Phoenix, likewise on their end. So when I look at this, um, I'm thinking that um, – I actually think it's the other way around. Uh, I think that it's too easy for Chris Paul to just uh, run a pick and roll and get, get Drew off, off of him. So I think it's diminishing returns to put Drew Holiday on CP3 when he's just going to run – through three, three pick and rolls and, and get them off him anyway. And this is different. If you put P.J. Tucker on Devin Booker, that was cool. They talked about it when they was in practice, when P.J. Tucker was with the Suns and Book was a pup. This ain't them. So I, not when you have other options out there. I'd even go Chris Middleton. But uh, P.J. Tucker can hold it down and he'll be a nice switch, complimentary. Um, I'm expecting big things out of Drew Holiday, but um, they're going to need it. They're going to need it to win. So uh, overall, I'm worried about the Bucks offense as a whole, though. So mm. Bucks are scoring enough points. Uh, all great points. All great points, I must say. Um, I am a little nervous on how this this final is going to be. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I hope it's a competitive game. I think it's going to be a competitive game when Giannis get back. Um, right now, I don't think Milwaukee are going to be uh, sort of contentions for the Phoenix Suns if Giannis is not there. He is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, he's the difference maker. They, this Phoenix Suns team, even though they may not have the superstar superstars, they have a great foundation, got a great nucleus. They got a great leader. They yeah. have a great up and coming rising superstar, Devin Booker. I know he struggled in the Clipper series, but those are some dogs out there. You talking about Paul George, you talking about Pat Beverly, who was locked in from one series where you didn't even know Pat Be Beverly existed to the series like Pat Beverly is back. Mr. 94 feet. Yeah, Mr. 94 feet and he's back. And so I don't know who can do that to a degree. I know P.J. Tucker is a dog. I love P.J. Tucker. He's that guy. I truly feel him and Holiday, even though Holiday struggles sometimes with scoring, it's that defense tenacity to make it challenging for you. Again, you can't stop superstars, but what you can do is make it difficult for them to score. And I think that's what he did for Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant got his numbers, but we saw fatigue played a major factor in Kevin Durant in the last possessions of the game, falling flat on some jumpers. Yes, he hit some, but he missed some as well, too, because them legs get tired. Again, uh, in the uh, Atlanta series, he did a lot. P.J. did a lot. Loose balls, diving on. See, one thing people don't never talk about that I love about P.J., 
he put his body on the line. And a lot of players don't like to do that. When you got that player like that, that's going to put his body on the line. It was times where he was getting loose balls, jumping on the floor, diving everywhere. That's that dude you need. That's that dude you need. And he can get you a couple buckets here and there. Now, this is going to be the defining factor. Without Giannis, I think this series ain't going to be close. Because Mm -hmm. I think the Phoenix Suns play great team defense. They play great team stifling defense. And when they want to stop you, they can make it extremely hard for you to score in a half court. And we've seen Milwaukee struggle in half court where sometimes their offense is so stagnant. And now the advantage that they had with Brooke Lopez against a smaller Atlanta team, they don't have that advantage no more. We saw when you had a, a skilled big man who was slow. What did DeAndre Ayton do to him? He made him look bad. Jokic is probably one of the most skilled big men, but one thing that him and Lopez have together is speed. They're both slow. They both slow big men. And the athleticism of DeAndre Atkins or Atkins, did I say eight? I say Atkins. I don't know why Atkins is in my head. Eight. <laughs> It's like last time it was Jackson. When it was yeah, I don't know. I don't know where these names come from. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. DeAndre, I truly believe, is going to be the defining factor if Giannis don't play. I don't know what Giannis you're going to get. They said he could have played game seven if it needed to be, but I don't know. I don't. I, I get what they're doing. They're resting because you get a little bit more time with the finals because you got today's game, you got Thursday, and then the next game won't be until Sunday. So you want to rest them as much as you can. I understand that. But you don't want to go down to a team like the Phoenix Suns because once they go up, they put you away. And so I just this is going to be interesting. I'm excited to see, but I, I'm also kind of nervous because, again, there's no stars. Chris Paul is a superstar, but he never won a chip before. And everybody else is, is blue collars. These are all blue collars. Giannis, he's not 100%. So, yes, this is great for Giannis, but, damn, we don't know when Giannis going to play. And so you got one superstar and a lot of blue-collar guys, so we may have a damn near San Antonio Spurs and Detroit Pistons series. Was It was probably some of the greatest basketball fundamentals Nobody talks about. That you ever played and you saw in them games was neck and neck. I mean, every game was back and forth every game, but they call that the most boringest finals ever. It's also known as a rock fight. That's just, you know, <laughs> call it a yeah, rock I mean, because because that was early. That was oh, what year was that? J O O five, right? O five or it was O five. Spurs it was, and in Cleveland or something. It was Spurs something. and Pistons. O four, O five. I think it was O four, right? It was after they won because the Pistons that went to the finals back to back, so they beat the Lakers and then they went that next year. So that's O five, O seven. I think it's O six, O seven. No, I know six. It was one of them years. But yeah, because when you look at those are two very defensive minded teams, right? Yes. And so during that era, I mean, they was winning games, bro. It was 82, 83. Like, you know, that's what those that series was. I expect this to be a little bit more high scoring. Um, you know, yesterday it was 05. Yesterday, you know, ESPN alert me, Giannis is doubtful. Today, mm-hmm. ESPN alerts me, Giannis is a game time decision. Like I said, me personally. I know what you said, Bake. You don't want to sit there and go down 0 2. Um, but I mean, if you look at it, you don't play them till Sunday. They don't play again till Wednesday, and you at home uh, on the Sunday game. Plus, you get to fly back. So I would give it to Sunday, or I would see how game one goes. And if we get ran, then hey, bro, you got to play game two to at least give us some. But if a game one, we compete. We good, just, you know, some here and there stuff. Game two, possibly, but me personally, I hold him out to game three. Mm. I think that this, um, I think that this bodes, like, it's already a given. Coach Bud does not uh, adjust well on the fly. This is in Phoenix, and Giannis, we don't know what to expect from him. So I think pretty much it's a given the Suns is going to win one, maybe two right out the gate. Yeah, but th- that's where it's going to get interesting. Giannis is going to play, and we'll see. I mean, you can talk about keeping him out till Sunday, but if you get into warmups and he's straight, then uh, and there's no real red flags, then put him out there because he's absolutely necessary. This ain't this ain't um, 
you know, okay, Kawhi gets hurt. They win a couple games. Are they better without him? Giannis, oh, man, the offense looks so much better without – no, dude. That's a Hall of Famer. That's a freak, dude. Hey, hey, like, hey, you can you can adjust a little bit, but no. If he's healthy. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, that, he's, going, he's going to – I mean, it's the NBA. He's yeah. going to the Hall. Yeah. Like, we Giannis, to, a Hall of Famer? Come yeah, on, he's, man. He's going he, to, he he don't. Don't go to the Hall of Fame, but God dang, bro, he, he only played, what, five five seasons, bro? No, but yeah, we, he funny. just J- – But Jack. he's – I'm talking about the pedigree, man, like the status of him. You can say superstar, I can say Hall of Famer. It's the same thing, you know, same yeah. difference. He had been – when it's all said and done, Giannis had been in the Hall of He should I'm be in the Hall of Fame, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. And to, to, correct, to correct me, that, that Spurs and Detroit series – the only people that won was the people that played at home. So home court advantage played a pivotal part because those first four games were blowouts for both the home team. So the home team, the San Antonio Spurs beat the Detroit Pistons handily in game one and two. Detroit beat the San Antonio Spurs handily in game uh, three and four. Then game five was a close game in San Antonio that they won. Game six was a close game in, in Detroit that they won. And then game seven went down to the wire and it was at home court. So the home team won every game in that series. I can see that possibly happening this way. This can possibly go six or seven. And if it goes seven, I think Phoenix gets the home court advantage and they're able to win. Uh, if it goes six, uh, I, I think the Bucks got to figure it out in six, in my opinion. Going seven, trying to win a game seven in Phoenix, I don't know if that's going to happen, in my opinion. No. No, I think uh, – I think. are we giving predictions? Go ahead, Reasons. Um, yeah, I'm, so I'm in, in, my, in my situation, I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at the Suns' track record, right? I got Suns in six mm. because they've won every game. On the road. All they close our games be on the road. They beat the Lakers in six. They beat Denver in four. And they beat the Clippers in six. Mm. Every game they've won has been on the road. So I'm going to stick with conventional wisdom. And I'm going to give them the win in six in Milwaukee. Chris Paul gets his title. Chris Paul cements himself as a top I'm gonna give him three. Okay, I'm gonna say, Thomas? Yeah, I'm moving gotta, past IT. Who's one? Oh, Magic. Come on. Oh, yeah, we not, I, mean, you, not I mean, well, I don't know. I, I get it. Magic is a point guard, but Magic wasn't a, a traditional point guard, man. Magic, exactly. That's why he's one. Exactly. Well, neither is Steph. When, but, when, you, know. when you listen, babe, I, I look at it like this in a 10 year span, 10 years, right? Magic played in eight finals. It ain't too many people besides LeBron James that can say in a 10-year span, mm-hmm. play Nate. Kobe right. is next in a 10-year span. He played in seven. No, I, I'm not I'm not knocking out. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. But when you look at the stature of uh, Chris Paul and the Seth Curry's and the Dame Lillard's, then you, you got Magic. There's just a separate category. Yeah, it's, it's different. But, but, he's, but he was listed, he was listed as a point guard. I hear you. I hear you. You going based off? So he's so he's one. Uh, he's a point forward in my opinion. Yeah, he's yeah, one. I agree. And then the Steph and Chris Paul debate gonna get interesting because you're gonna look at Steph as being a prolific scorer and what he has done for the game, and you're gonna look at Chris Paul and how he's a leader and how he's more of a traditional point guard. So, like, I feel like that Steph and Chris Paul debate to a real basketball fan is interesting because it's just like, what do you kind of want out of your guards type stuff? Yeah. Um, I, I I respect both of their games. I feel like it's it depends on who you want as your point guard. As long as Chris Paul can win this title. But he can get to the get, table is what, what you're saying. Chris can get to the table. And, Chris is know. at the table. Right now, he kind of more, you know, hey, can I eat? <laughs> Can I eat? Can I? You feel me? And because right now he's like, if I was looking at my table, it's Magic, Steph, Isaiah, Stockton, Chris Paul. But Stockton and Chris Paul are like neck and neck because, you know, Stockton got records that'll never be touched. And Chris Paul, you know, is right there. Chris Paul can win the title. I can move him ahead of Stockton and Isaiah, even though Isaiah got two. But because of 
of what Chris Paul did, I feel like a little bit more impactful than Isaiah. But I, I, I will really hope Chris Paul can get this title. Um, I, I haven't always been a big Chris Paul fan. I can admit that because I never, I really didn't, I didn't like his antics. I feel like he always just did a little too much at times. Yeah. It's a little man thing, man. You, yeah, you, I know what I'm saying. I just like, come on, bro. You got to do a lot of stuff to, to prove. You got to show. You got to do a lot more. Well, let me give you. Uh, let me give you mine. I think that this comes down to uh, to DeAndre Aiden and how good he really is, and we mm. finna we finna find out. That's what this is going to come down to. I think the Suns is going to jump out to an early lead, maybe win the first two at home. What I think is they're going to they're going to have some problems trying to put down a team, like a real team. We're talking about the Lakers, AD out, LeBron extremely hobbled, um, no Kawhi, no Jamal Murray. Like that was, I'm not incriminated. If they get this one, it's because they earned it. So whether Giannis misses one or two games, I'm not going to incriminate them. I'm not going to asterisk their, uh, their title. They'll have earned it. But they're going to have to put down a fully healthy team. By but, game three, I expect Giannis to be 85, 90%. I don't know. We'll see a lot of that tonight. But here's the, here's the flow. They get up early. Giannis starts to find his sea legs. Um, it's 2-2. Two, two. Maybe the Suns is up 3-2. I'm picking Bucks in seven. I'm not even going to give an injury qualifier on Giannis. I'm just assuming... Okay. That by by game two, game three, he's going to be right, and I expect uh, I expect Phoenix to play with their food. They're going to sit there and they're going to try to close them out, and they might trick off one or two games trying to do that. And if it gets to game seven, it's because they're not having mental problems. Um, and even though I despise the Bucks because I don't think that they've had to be battle tested, and they haven't won it in fashion that I predicted. I predicted them every every you know every series, but they just have not been convincing. I'm just going to chalk it up to they just don't have the pedigree yet, and uh, and I'm not betting on Chris Paul closing this one out. You want to kick the Clippers while you're down? Go ahead. Mm. Now you're going to have to deal with Drew Holiday, and if Freak by be. Game Seven, that's two weeks away. Freak's going to be all right by then. So uh, I'm, riding with, I'm riding with the Bucks, even though I don't like them. Okay, I hear you. That's a good, 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 good analysis. We're going to timestamp this. We're going we to come know, back to this. Don't even trip. I'm not saying we ain't going to come back to this, okay? <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying when we go into um, the road to how each team got there, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie and say Phoenix did have an easier role because they played against a lot of the teams that superstars did get injured either when they was playing or before they got there. And so their role was a little bit, a little bit tainted, in my opinion. And then they're going into a finals where the, the superstar of the other team is not healthy. I don't know if you ever hyperextend your knee before, but that's one of the most, like, it's nagging injuries you can deal with. It, 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 it lingers. It lingers. You Anytime you jump, it, we call it jumper's knee. It, it's like a pain. And Giannis is athletic. He can't shoot. So he's going to be limited. I don't care when he come back, how he come back, he's not going to be playing the way Giannis would play if he was a healthier Giannis, right? Giannis already dealt with a calf injury, but it was like a little calf bruise or whatever. It wasn't fully. But that hyperextend is going to impact his movement. It's going to impact his jumping. It's going to impact his athleticism. So whenever he does come back, He's not going to be 100%. Yes, he still would be on the floor, and we know you got to play. If, you, if you're trying to win, you got to leave it on the floor, but we know that this is not a fully healthy Giannis Antetokounmpo. So if Phoenix do win this NBA Finals, we have to bring that into question. Was this really a hard journey to get to the NBA Finals? It's going it's it's to look it's going to look like the Warriors in 2015, kind of what Jay said. Because when the Warriors won in 2015, uh, Conley was hurt. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beverly, somebody else. Beverly, that was like a murderer's role, point guard. Yeah, yeah, like, just, every, like every time they came against a team. Conley, yeah, it was Conley. Yeah. Uh, so every time they played against somebody, that team wasn't fully healthy. Then they got to the finals. Kyrie got hurt in game one. No Kevin Love. And the Warriors is playing against Della Vadova and LeBron. 
And you feel me? And that's how, you know, but, you know, to LeBron's credit, he actually went up 2-1. And, you know, Warriors just ended up winning it. So, like I said, when I look at it, we can have all these qualifiers and we can have all these injuries and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we, we got to take into account uh, the, the, the Suns dealt with some stuff during this run, too. I mean, if we think about it, Chris Paul getting hurt in game one against the Lakers kind of almost changed that whole damn series because he wasn't right for a few games. Devin Booker breaking his nose, campaign spraining his ankle, uh, Cam Johnson missing a game uh, in the Clippers series. So it's not like the Suns have just skated through yeah, this. Yeah, but here and there is different than it, it, Anthony it, Davis all the way gone, LeBron half speed. It, like, it, that's it is, and I, and I hear that, and I agree to that, but I just look at it like, Man, sports is is a game of skill and attrition. Attrition, yeah. And yep. you feel me? People going down, that ain't the Suns' fault. I, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, when you look at these competitors, they want to compete against the best so you don't have this cloud hanging over them. It's better when you beat everybody fully healthy because then ain't nobody got nothing to say. It's like, yeah, we just ran through all y'all bums. You feel yep. me? And so, you know, like... In you know, and to your point too, Bake, when you said about Giannis, it's gonna be interesting with him just because he relies so much on his athleticism and mm-hmm. that spin move that he got, that euro that he got. I mean, he probably be playing that little bulky knee brace. And last year when Giannis sprained his ankle in the second round against yeah. Miami, we saw that Giannis wasn't the same Giannis with just a sprained ankle. And we all know ankle sprains can vary from here to there. So now with this hyperextended knee, it's just like, is how much of a Giannis he's going to be? If he had a jumper, then I wouldn't be worried because it's like, oh, he can stand out there and just shoot jumpers and be seven foot seven, whatever, however tall he is. But because he relies so much on getting to the rim, being explosive, and to Jay's point of Coach Bud being atrocious at in-game adjustments, and putting that man in better spots. That's why so, I really see this play. is where this is where I say it might be a blessing in disguise. Because if if Giannis, if if the if the offense ain't gonna be, hey Giannis, take it at the at the free throw line extended and face your dude up and see if you can get that spin euro off, then it's gonna it, the Bucks are gonna be better for it. If if Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton come right out the gate like they did finishing off this this previous series then it's, they're going to be better served for it. The question is, is Brooke Lopez became a necessity those last two games. And I was actually surprised at how well he played. Uh, but, but this one's different. And so when, I, when, when Phoenix is tempted to play with their food at the end of that game, it's going to be, can DeAndre Aiden exploit them and put these dogs down? That's the question. And I, don't, I could be wrong. Um, but and the Suns could 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 handle this in in five games, maybe six. But I, I just I don't want you to be surprised when Phoenix is front running. It's all laid out for them, and they have issues putting them down. No, I hear you. I definitely hear you. We're gonna find out. Uh, very you never gave your prediction. You never said. Oh, yeah. I said Bucks and seven. Oh, no, go ahead, baby. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, yeah. I, I got know, I, I got Suns and six, Bucks I, and seven. I, I'm going to say. I'm gonna go based off. I'm gonna go based off the Spurs in the Detroit Pistons series, and I'm gonna say they it's gonna be a game seven, because uh, they gotta draw this out. If it's a sweep, it it'll look bad. I don't know. I don't know. Uh oh, cons- here goes conspiracy I'm theories. Not saying it's Can't gonna be conspiracy. Make politics. I, I, I'm not gonna say that, but I'm gonna say the home team wins every game in this series, and Phoenix wins at home in a tight, close game. Uh, game seven. I, I got Phoenix taking the first two at the crib. I think Milwaukee takes the next two at their crib. And then it's a dog, to, a dog fight in game five, but Phoenix able to get it done with Chris Paul and his leadership. And then game six is a dog fight again, but the Bucks find a way to win. And then game seven is just, you know, who wants it more? If they get to game seven, that means Giannis is healthy and Giannis is the best player on the floor. Uh, That's what that means. I, I, hey, we're, we're, we got to figure out when Giannis. I'm not going to go by that, okay? I'll see Giannis when I see Giannis. But I'm going to go Phoenix in seven. 
every team, every game is win, won by the home team. I think tonight may be a blowout if Giannis don't play, in my opinion. I think they're going to blow him out the water. I think they're going to come out a little bit frantic because it's their first NBA Finals, but I think they're going to lock in. And I'm telling you right now that Aiden exploit and putting Brick Lopez in the brick and roll, and he's going to be the neutralizer for Brick Lopez because he's more athletic than him. And he's much more faster than him. He can get up that floor up and down quickly than him. We saw what he did to Jokic. And Jokic is a skilled big man. And Brick Lopez is no slouch by, by far. But when he's playing that five and, and Giannis is not on that floor, they're not going to be able to exploit their sides no more. That's why they was able to get rid of Atlanta like they did because it was able to exploit their sides. It was getting about three, four, five, six, seven different rebounds. Now you got a big man that's going to neutralize your size now what are you going to do? And then I think my dark horse for the Bucks is going to be Drew Holiday. I think he oh, yeah, would be the yeah. dark horse for the Bucks. would be Drew Holiday. I think him, that matchup with him and uh, Chris Paul is going to be a big one because, yes, he's going to defend Chris Paul, but Chris Paul is going to have to defend him unless they put Chris Paul on somebody else. Don't be surprised Chris if it's Drew Holiday and Booker going at it. And then you figure out, you know, as a team, how to deal with CP3. Because I see the matchup going like this. Without This is without Giannis. So without Giannis, I got Lopez, Aiden. I got D-Book, Garden, P.J. Tucker, because P.J. Tucker just going to sit in the corner. I got Crowder on Middleton, and I got Bridges on Drew, and you're going to put Chris Paul on uh, Covington? Who started? Or, that was Covington? Yeah. Yeah, or or oh, it depends on with the, the starting lineup. Yeah. But yeah, if yeah. they go, if they if Giannis not if Giannis don't play, they don't start coming. Then they go Portis. Then I got Aiden on Portis. Uh, I mean, I Aiden on Portis. Aiden on Lopez. Then you go. You can still go deep book on Portis because Portis really not going to post up unless he gets to posting up. Then you go back to Jay Crowder, oh. and you know, and then you regardless. Just Regardless, the, the the Bucks are going to have an offensive problem until they until they adjust because the yeah. Phoenix Suns defense is legit. So I'm it's going to be dope. it's going to be a good game. But don't again, don't sleep on Portis. He did some big things for him in that in, in that series as well. So they I'm looking at campaign as my as my X factor. I'm looking oh, at final, Finals MVP, Chris Paul. If 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 Phoenix win, Chris Paul. If the Bucks win and Giannis plays, Giannis or Chris Middleton. Those are the two that I'm going with. Chris Middleton, probably majority. I'm leaning more because he, he's been battle tested. He's been the guy that's the closer. They may give it to Giannis because of the name. But I think Chris Middleton or, or, or Chris Paul, uh, I think Devin Booker will have a good series. But I don't. I think they're going to give it to Chris Paul. It would be Chris Paul if the Suns win. Uh, I'm going to say Drew Holiday if the Bucks win. Whoa! Ooh, I like it. There we go. Well, y'all let us know in the comments below. How do y'all feel about these finals? Who do y'all got? Who do y'all th got taking game one? Who y'all got taking the whole thing? And who's going to win finals MVP? Let us know in the comments below. Always remember to stay safe, stay blessed, man. And, and let's not keep coming for our allies, man. Stall them out, bro. Stall him out. Remember to talk that talk. See y'all on Thursday. <laughs>